Hi everyone, Carlos here from My Family Flight Plan. Today I want to talk to you about a mid-air collision that occurred on, at Watsonville Municipal Airport. The incident occurred on August 18th, 2022. It involved a Cessna 152 and a Cessna 340. Collided around midfield um, of Watsonville Airport. I don't typically do accident analysis videos, but I felt it was important to share my opinion as a pilot especially because I fly into this airport quite frequently. Watsonville Airport is a very popular airport for the Bay Area pilots. There's a very good restaurant on the field and a lot of pilots go for the uh, inexpensive field there as well. It's not uncommon to see six to eight airplanes in the traffic pattern and procedures are very important at this airport just due to the high density of traffic. From preliminary analysis uh, an ADS-B data, it looks like the Cessna 340 was doing a low approach, uh, perhaps an instrument approach. He was going about 180 knots on final, and he did make callouts at a 10 mile mark, at a 3 mile mark, but by the time he hit short final, he was still going about 180 knots. The Cessna 152 also had position reports. As, he entered, as the Cessna 152 entered its left base, the pilot noticed that the 340 was gaining on him very quickly. The Cessna 152 pilot decided to do a go around as he transmitted that the 340 was gaining on him quite, quite fast and he didn't feel comfortable so he was going to go around. The 340 pilot did not make any additional transmissions. However, based on ADS-B data, it looks like he veered to the right of runway 20 and potentially try to do a go around as well and do a 180 over midfield. This is where the midair collision occurred around the midfield of runway 20. The Cessna 152 was conduct, uh, conducting his go around and the Cessna 340 also looking to do the go around uh, collided right around the midfield. At this point in time, it's, it looks like all three passengers on board um, passed away. I'm making this video in the hopes that we all learned something from it and potentially prevent an accident similar to this one from happening again. Some of the lessons learned from this accident is that communication is vital. While both pilots were communicating with one another in this accident, it doesn't look like they completely understood their positioning. We can communicate as much as we want on the radio, but we need to be intentional with how we interpret and understand the positioning of other aircraft. The speed that the 340 pilot had on final probably took the Cessna 152 pilot off guard, and they were very close to one another at a very critical point in flight. Straight-in procedures at non-towered airports are sometimes frowned upon, and I'll be the first to admit I've done a straight-in approach into runway 20 at Watsonville. It is possible, but I rarely do it unless there's absolutely nobody in the traffic pattern. There's a reason we have traffic pattern procedures. It doesn't take that much longer to enter on the 45 or fly midfield and enter on the downwind. Take a few extra minutes to ensure you enter the traffic pattern properly and make sure you're scanning for aircraft in the pattern. And lastly, when there is a pilot doing a straight-in approach on a busy pattern day, speak up. At Watsonville, there have been multiple times where I've been cut off when I was on downwind by a straight-in approach. While it's very frustrating and it could get me upset, it's better to extend the downwind, let that traffic go, and then turn your base behind him. And let him know that we're extending our downwind because he cut us off. It's better to talk about these things on the ground and point to some of these examples, like the one that happened, to avoid these accidents from happening again. I hope this early analysis of this accident helps us reflect what we're doing in the traffic pattern. Flying is an incredible privilege that we have, and it's absolutely critical to keep each other safe. Thank you. We'll see you on the next video.